The Christian Association can has called on the federal government to declare the Mieti Cattle Breeders Association a group. The president of Khan, Reverend Ayokunle, in a world press in Abuja over the killings of Lawan and Dimi by the Boko Haram terrorist group said Christians in the country have continued to receive the short end of the stick from groups operating mostly in the northern regions. Reverend Ayokunle said social groups like the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association have made provocative statements which threaten the unity of the country. He called on the federal government to prove its commitment to the lives and property by labeling the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association a terrorist group. And joining me live in the studio to talk more on this this morning is Air Vice Marshal Femi Badiboy, security expert. Thank you very much for joining us still this morning, sir. What is your reaction to this call to prescribe the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders as a terrorist group? Well, um, what I'll call hard evidence as to their involvement in a lot of the atrocities that have taken place are not necessarily there. But the utterances of the leaders of the group after some of these things happen is quite disturbing. Um, a group that seems to place the life of its uh, cattle above that of humans is, is quite a disturbing group. And, um, I retired in 2008. I served in places as diverse as Kano, Katsina, I mean Kano, Yola, Makodi, and Kaduna. And in some of those places, I was actually on the Security Council of the state. And up till 2008, Meati Allah virtually did not exist on media, on social media, on, or even on security issues how they have grown in such a quick time to become a, a, um, a group that is constantly on the news is actually quite disturbing. They're, they're a group like any other group. We have Poultry Farmers Association, we have Fish, fish Breeders Association, we have all kinds of groups who have their interests being trampled on one way or the other by uh, any other group in the society and so on. We don't see them getting so violent. The issue of arms, we knew we had about arms proliferation in the South yes. um, at one time, and there was a move to mop up the arms in the South South, which proved to be quite successful. And even after that, with all the violence that's going on, we know those people, certain individuals, who can be held accountable for you know, what you can call uh, militancy in the South South and certain parts of the Southwest. But in the North, with this particular group, they're not even hidden. They come out, they speak, they, they, we've seen them with the Benue State government, we've seen them with certain other government officials who are negotiating sometimes even with the high level police officers. And yet they have not called their uh, people to order. They continue to carry sophisticated arms like AK-47 because they talk about cattle rustlers and so on and so forth. There has to be some, uh, this group has to be contained. Right. Yeah. Now, the, the major concerns, because most times um, issues like this are always drawn on religious lines. It, it's a very sensitive matter. What, what can we do as a people to sensitively um, manage the situation that it is? Well, anybody who grew up in places, even in Lagos, in the area of, uh, you know, the cattle market at Apapa and one or two places, yes. will tell you that Fulani people are very nice people. I, I grew up in the north in Kaduna. I mean, I, I know them to be people who move around with their nomads, with their sticks and... Yeah, they're very nice and, people. Yes. Um, they can do... Serious, grievous bodily harm with those sticks of theirs, yes. and they were skilled at it. Yes, they love their cattle, but in every area they get to, they try to assimilate, they settle down, they learn the language, and, and uh, in fact, by the third or fourth generation, you have difficulty, even not for their lean futures, to differentiate them from local people in the origins. I think what has happened is the migration of, you know, the Fulanis from outside, Nigeria, who are trying to find new pastoral lands and so on. Because they are the same tribe, because they have certain things 
in common. Uh, in common. They, 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 they tend to accommodate these groups, but these groups are coming from areas where all they've known all their lives is war, Chad, Niger, and so on. And so they are armed, and they fight for their rights, and they seem to believe that um, land, grazing land particularly, is provided by God, and they have a right to get into anywhere they get it. And so uh, they, they, they are the ones committing the atrocities. But the disturbing thing is Meati Allah coming out and not condemning this group. And then even the local ones that you are used to, um, also not condemning these groups. And when some areas are sacked, that is like, you know, maybe a village is burnt and we've seen some samples in the north and the people have had to run away for their, their lives. You come back a month or so later and the local Fulani that you're used to yes. have actually moved there and settled there. Do we have a permanent solution in view in the light of all of this? Do you see a permanent solution in view? A permanent solution is to organize grazing lands. Okay. Gra you know, it's like if you go to uh, certain parts of the world, like in California, you can find uh, housing estates like maybe Lecky. Some part of Lecky will be reserved for cattle farmers, and you'll find people with over a couple of hundred cattle living within 10, 15 minutes drive of your house. And it is so well organized that you don't even, uh, you are not disturbed by this cattle because right. so on. So we must right. do that. All right. Advice, Marshall Femi Badabo, thank you very much for staying with us still and for your contribution.